my dear friends i was just 16 years old when i decided to break my first boundary i had to do with giving up my education and choosing to move to an unknown future in the city of mumbai people still ask me why did you move to mumbai why did you not complete your educations the answer lies in the heart of every young dreamer who sees boundaries not as a barriers but as challenges that test his courage i was driven by a need to see if i had the courage to make a life for myself in the most happening city of our country mumbai is more than just a city for me it was my training ground for business it is here that i learned to short and trade in diamonds the field of trading makes a good teacher i learned very early that an entrepreneur can no never be frozen by over evaluating the choices in front of him it is mumbai that taught me to think big you must first dare to dream beyond your boundaries but life as a way of taking unexpected turns just as i was turning 19 i was called back by my elder brother to assist in running our small scale pvc film factory situated near amdavad the business was faced with many challenges primarily due to extreme government control and a restrictive import policies leading to severe shortages of raw materials this was my first real encounter with the limitations of the business environment in india yet it was also an early lesson that laid the ground for the next set of business i was to start on the mid 1980s marked the beginning of transformation in india in 1985 under the leadership of sri rajiv gandhi the country took its first steps towards economic liberalizations the easing of import policies opened up a new possibilities for businesses having run our pvc factory i understood the pains of the small scale import sectors and therefore despite having no prior experience in trading i saw an opportunity in this environment of a new policy i took a leap and established a trading organizations for importing polymers to supply to the struggling small scale industries by the time i turned 23 my trading venture was doing well then came 1991 when india faced a severe foreign exchange crisis that brought the country to the brink of economic collapse it was during this crisis that shri pv narsimha rao the then prime minister and dr manmohan singh the then the finance ministers outlined a series of a bold economic reforms these reforms included reducing of import tariffs deregulating industries opening up the economy to foreign investments and encouraging public private partnership in infrastructure development every nation 
as his transformative years that changed the direction of his future. 1947 was about a free India. 1991 was about liberalization of our businesses. And in 2014, under the leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, the essence of freedom was further accelerated as reforms and good governance took a central stage. All these years stand as a turning point, each building on the other, in India's remarkable journey. Reflecting on the events, between 1985 and 1991, it is clear to me that these were more than just moments of economic change. They were forces that reshaped the business landscape of India and laid the foundation for India's transformations. These reforms marked the end of the license Raj, a period defined by excess regulation and control over the Indian economy. Many of the established business houses that had grown large since independence failed to evolve and recognize the significance of the policy changes. They held on to the status quo, unable to evolve and over time become weak or irrelevant. Meanwhile, those who dared to break boundaries, capitalize on the opportunities and set themselves up for success. Looking back, we were one of them. In every crisis lies the potential for a reinvention and it is our courage during these moments of truth that defines the path to greatness. For me, the liberalization of 1991 was my second big break. At 29, I established a global trading house dealing in polymers, metals, textiles and agri-products. And within two years, we had become the largest global trading house in the country. This is when I understood the combined value of both speed and scale. Thereafter, in 1994, we decided it was time to go to public. And Adani Exports, now known as Adani Enterprise, launch is IPO. The IPO was strong success and underscored for me the importance of public markets. However, while we had been a beneficiary of the economic reforms, I began to realize the limitation of our business model. Trading by its very nature, is volatile. To build a stable and sustainable enterprise and gain the confidence of the markets, I recognized that we needed to invest in assets that would provide a solid foundation for growth. I realized that to break the next set of boundaries, I would have to first start with challenging my own status quo. The future belongs to those who dare to see beyond the present, who recognize that today's limits are tomorrow's starting points. And my third major break was about to come one that would propel us 
into a new orbit. These realizations prompted the next critical shift in our business model. In 1995, the Gujarat government announced the Port Focus Industrial Development Plan through a public-private partnerships. Around that time, we had been approached by the global commodities trader Cargill. It was a proposal to partner for a manufacturing of and sourcing of salt from the Kutch region. While the partnership did not materialize, we were left with about 40,000 acres of a marshy land and approval to build a captive jetty at Mundra for the export of salt. What others saw as a marshy barren land, we saw as a canvas waiting to be transformed. That canvas is now by far our nation's largest port. Mundra became my karma bhumi. <laughs> Mundra became my karma bhumi and made my vision a reality. A powerful testimony to the fact what you dream, you create. And what you think, you become. Mundra today hosts India's largest port, the largest industrial special economic zone, the largest container terminals, the largest thermal power plants, the largest solar manufacturing facility, the largest copper smelter, and the largest edible oil refinery. And yet, we are only about 10% of what Mundra will eventually become. It stands as a living monument to the power of integrated business models and the strategic value of adjacencies. Challenging the very concept of core competencies that the West advocates. My dear friends, over the years, I learned a vital lesson. The bigger your bats, bigger are the boundaries you break. And bigger the boundaries you break, lesser is the competition. Picture Khavda in Kutch, one of the world's most inhospitable deserts, now transformed into the world's biggest renewable energy installations, spanning a several hundred square kilometers. <laughs> Khavda is not just another project, it is a vision already generating more than 3,000 megawatt of clean energy and on track to reach 30,000 megawatt in next five years. And there is no parallel to Khavda today. For us, Khavda is a symbol of a national pride capturing the philosophy of everything that the Adani Group as a company stands for. This is a premium membership program where you will get many benefits. In the case of market newsletter, live chat for your questions in the first place, market outlook, weekend for market scan, anchors with chat and a lot of things. In this premium subscription, there are three plans, silver, gold and platinum. जिनकी शुरुआत मात्र एक सौ उनसठ रूपए महीने से होती है इससे जुड़ना भी बेहद आसान है बिस्तक के यूट्यूब चैनल पर जाएं, ज्वाइन बटन पर क्लिक करें और अपना प्लान सिलेक्ट करें बस बन गए आप हमारे प्रीमियम मेंबर।